Yes, so, uh, so our program is four months in length, and so we just chose our, our batch seven uh, class, which is about 30 companies, and all of them already had product developed. Uh, most of them had some customers in revenue. So what we're focusing on really on is, um, is customer development and distribution. So once you have the product built, how do you get customers in revenue? So we're focusing on a four month period on customer acquisition and sales process. And so within four months, uh, you can actually accomplish some uh, major goals and actually do a lot of learning. So for us and what we're doing, four months works perfectly well. Yeah, and I, I, would, I would add, I think that, by the way, three, or f three in the U.S., four months outside, so in Europe and Israel, I think it's plenty of time. So what we see, yeah, these guys, they don't go to sleep for four months, right? They work around the clock. You know, there's these meetings at 10 p.m. Uh, between the teams. or it's, they, they really work hard throughout that period. And I think the good thing that happens is the pace makes them, they can't stop. So you have these scrum meetings with all the teams together, and none of the entrepreneurs can come and say, I did not achieve anything this week, because they all have to run very quickly. And, and even if we take uh, teams that are earlier than the, the, um, what, what you mentioned, you know, the one thing we do with them in the first two weeks of the program in, in part of the customer development is we make them realize that there's actually no one in the world that's willing to pay for what they're putting out there. And, and, and usually it takes two years for an entrepreneur to figure out that the product is not exactly what he's in love with, but the market is actually asking for something a little bit different. So we think if you can actually take these two years and put it down to two weeks and then do customer interviews and not pitching, again, you just cut two years into two weeks. And so this is the way we run the whole, the whole program. And I think the proof is in the pudding. So if we're, we're talking about proof, uh, success rates. So uh, Waira just announced last week, they've, they've put out their numbers. So Waira is the Telefonica's uh, uh, network of accelerators. They have 14 of those, mostly in Latin America, some in Europe. And the numbers they've, they've shared was, I think they're on average, they get 40% of the startups from the wire accelerators are getting follow-on funding. Uh, on an average, I think in Europe it was about $400,000, in Latin America $500,000 or, or the other way around. Um, w what do you guys think about success rates of uh, incubators or accelerators? Can, can you share some numbers? Well, in our, in our case, the way we measure success is that if a company that graduates the incubator succeeds to raise at least half a million dollars within a period of one year, and this is a criteria that we set up for ourselves, you can define it differently, of course, because 500,000 is big enough to uh, validate the value that was generated in the uh, incubator. In this case, if the company succeeds to do, the, uh, to do so, it means that we have done our job. And uh, based on statistics that we've done along the years, uh, it's more than 50% uh, of the companies that will succeed to raise at least $500,000 within one year. And we believe that this is uh, quite uh, impressive, uh, taking into consideration the fact that most of the companies in the incubators, uh, more than 50% are life science based. And these companies are more risky ones and more difficult for them to raise money. So this is quite impressive. Anyone else? Numbers? Shai? Well, I think one terrible metric to measure is um, number of companies still alive because it doesn't really mean anything. I think you should either accelerate success or accelerate failure. So having uh, your whole cohort still alive doesn't really mean anything uh, for the market. You could have two founders who are making $100,000 in revenue and that company's still alive, but they're not doing well. So I think that's a pretty bad metric to look at as far as success. Um, I mean, a lot of these accelerators are too early to really measure success, which is really ROI, return on investments, and multiples for the investors. But yeah, I think 500K uh, follow-on round of financing, following with the accelerator over a year is a good metric. And we really look at, uh, we're not expecting our accelerator batch to all succeed. We actually want a lot of failure because we only need a small percentage of the accelerator batch to do well for us to make it, uh, money and for our investors to make money. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree with, with uh, what you say because it's uh, three months or four months or even six months, whatever. A good program, a good accelerator, and a good team is able to get a very good startup. There is a good, ch the challenge I see almost my country, but I believe it's mostly the challenge is after the accelerator that you have not enough metrics to uh, raise those money that can bridge the gap be 
to reach once you have the metrics to uh, be assisted for a roadshow with reasonable numbers to, to raise a round a in terms of money. So I think it's a, a accelerated just part of a supply chain and we do our job in getting successful to order an investor day or to order corporations. But then the, the life of a startup, uh, even the, the short period of life of the timeline of a, of a startup is like two years. So we cannot base the first three to four months as successful or not. So, so I agree. First of all, I think that the measure of how many are funded and how much funding they get is actually a bad measure. That's the standard, the way accelerators judge themselves. But I think if we find a better way, and it will take some time to do the long-term success, so customer traction, uh, um, um, long-term success of these of these companies, revenues, uh, profits, etc. That will be a much much better uh, um, uh, metrics for our industry, for the accelerators, uh, incubators, and, and these programs. So we we've just on uh, to uh, add on the numbers. So we had 120 startups going through our program so far. So it's uh, Bangalore, Beijing, Tel Aviv, and, and Seattle. Um, we had seven acquisitions already through the 120. We only uh, exist uh, for a year and a half. Um, uh, we had 20% of them raising Series A already. And for example, 85% of those that are graduating in the program here in Tel Aviv raise an average of a million dollar coming out of the accelerator, which, which is, we know it's fairly high. Now we need to keep that rate when we go throughout the world. So we know it's a, it's a big challenge and, and every ecosystem is different. The average amount that you raise in India is not the average amount that you raise in Tel Aviv, is not the average amount that you raise in Berlin. That's clear. Um, but, but you know, we think that that stuff, definitely something that, that more and more people that are building proper program with all the efforts that are put into program will actually help uh, get uh, more funding into the right companies in, in these places. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, so the, as far as how you measure success, I think it takes seven or eight years to really measure true success as far as uh, what kind of multiple you're driving to. And so most of the accelerators are not there yet. Also, most of the accelerators are funded by investors. And so the only significant metric you can really measure is funding. And uh, they, most of these accelerators raise capital in sort of two-year increments. And so to show your investors that you're actually making progress, the, the only metric you can really show is follow-on capital. And so uh, if, if you're backed by investors, that's a good metric. Uh, I mean, if you're a corporate accelerator, it's different because you already have backing. You're not worried about raising more money. Uh, so it kind of depends on who's backing your accelerator in terms of how you look at success. So, so tell me, how should people pick a program? How should pe people pick an, a, an incubator, uh, a co-working space, uh, an accelerator, and you know, all these programs? How, how should they go about it? And you need to consult an entrepreneur of what's the right way to do that. What, what would you tell them? Well, I think, I think a good point was about the industry, industry experience and industry knowledge within the accelerator and the incubator because one of the big, big challenges that uh, the, the startups face is getting to the industry, meeting its clients and uh, getting more knowledge about how successful might be its product in the market. And that's where the accelerator or incubator uh, knowledge and connections to the industry can really contribute a lot to the market. Uh, then definitely the success story, I think, and, the, and uh, in particular the, uh, the, the, the track of the people who are working in that accelerator. Because in the very end you work with, this, with a specific person, with a specific mentor, and he or she has a good history. And then uh, when we talk about the success rate, which might be the metric for this, uh, it's a quite tricky metric, I would say. I, I don't believe that it's a good practice to have a very high success rate because it, it probably means that you are too conservative for the risk taking and you are rejecting on the, on the, on the upfront, you're rejecting too many projects because your incremental risk uh, or your incremental value of getting more risk within the accelerator uh, can be very positive. You don't, if you have let's say eight out of 10 projects successful, it's probably bad management because you are too conservative and you are rejecting lots of good projects that might incrementally give a good value to, to your business. I just want to comment on that because in our case, the acceptance rate is uh, as a result of the budget. So the more budget we have, the more companies, of course, we can get. So we have to be uh, conservative. 
And we, according to the budget that we have, we have to select the best entrepreneurs that exist at that point of time. So it's not kind of something that we control too much. And just a comment on how we measure success. Because for us, remember, the objective of the incubators is uh, to, as a response to a market failure. And the market failure is that the entrepreneur could not raise money by himself. Now, our objective is to uh, lead him to a milestone where he can do it by himself. If we do it, it means that we've done our job. And this is why we measure uh, success, as I just described. Now, you cannot do the same for accelerators, because there the objective is different. The success criteria should be a result of the objective. And the incubator objective is not the same as the accelerators. Well, I think uh, that the budget constraint is relevant only to the to the su some extent. And for us, for example, this year we have we had an excessive budget. And uh, in fact, for this year we will spend about only 70% of the budget. And this means that oh, there are plenty of programs here that are willing well, to we'll take your access money. I'm but sure that exactly. Uh, but uh, the the idea is what we do for the next year. We transfer it, and we will finance lots of the very early s stage projects with the grant financing to, to bring more pipeline in. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we should take more risk and just use it all. Um, w once again, I think this, this expression of uh, success rate is a little bit misleading because when you have a country like Israel with the investment per capita on VC is $250, are you ask $100 then obviously the success rate is based on number of exits and how much money you can raise in uh, Series A. and uh, that's, that's natural. That's normal. Um, now, if you go to um, uh, a country like Jordan, um, that's a different story because um, it's the only country where the king personally attends the pitching events. I don't know of a country where the, um, the top leader of that country goes personally and, and sets listening to entrepreneurs pitching their companies. Obviously, the objective is different. Obviously, the, the mindset um, uh, uh, or the objective of, of Jordan is they want to change the mindset of uh, young Jordanians from their dream of being government employees, where the government cannot really employ everybody. That, that's, uh, that's uh, especially these days, it's obvious. So they want to uh, send a message to young Jordanians that being an entrepreneur, having your own company, is much more promising than being a government employee. Um, so the objective of the program, the success rate, I don't care if he doesn't raise money, I just, I care, the success rate for me is the change of mindset. Now, if it happens that some of these companies, and it, it, it does happen, I mean, one of the companies that we had, um, it's called Marca VIP, uh, which was part of the ecosystem, it's ra it raised um, only recently $100 million. $100 million, all the fund that we had for Oasis is $6 million. The whole process of OSS 506 million and one company came out of the system and raised 100 million dollars and um, now they are employing more than 500 uh, employees. Beautiful. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that this is happening, but this is not to me the major objective of setting up these um, uh, incubators and uh, angel networks. Um, as a private investor, definitely I want to make money, definitely I want to have exits, but, but governments um, in, in the region has a totally different uh, 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 intention, objective, and I think they have to invest into the ecosystem in terms of paying for the, 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 the startups and the, and the incubators. If the Israeli government did not have a Uzma 20 years ago or 15 years ago, you would not have the VC industry that you have today. So this is something that the governments, um, and, and, and even in some cases, the big corporations like Microsoft, uh, the telcos, I mean, you, you mentioned uh, Telefonica. This is very smart for Telefonica because they are themselves a major consumer for what comes out of these incubators. So for them, it's an efficient ecosystem that they're creating themselves. And I think it makes a lot of sense that they pay for the, these accelerators and incubators and create their own funds to invest in these companies. So first of all, I want to say um, it's good to be the king. So, uh, so it's good. Yeah, so other people here would like to get the king as well. Um, I'll, and, I'll talk and, to him. <laughs> okay, and just just to mention regarding what's the uh, um, what's the limiting factor. So I don't think that the limiting factor is is how many startups you're willing to put into the program. You know, one of the th biggest I think limiting factors is actually mentors. I think that the one biggest differentiator that I've seen between successful and not successful programs or accelerator programs are the quality of the mentors. And in any given ecosystem. 
there is a limited number of serial entrepreneurs that have been successful, have failed as well, etc., that are willing to pay forward, to help others, to make other companies successful as well. And you can't use their time as often as you want. So um, uh, I know the experience with Techstars, for example. There are places that Techstars started with two programs a year and went down to one because they knew that they can't utilize the mentors as often as they want. So I, I, I think this is, this is probably the number one limit, l limiting factor is access to the best mentors around and the, their time with startups. I, don't know. I, so. I personally agree. It's even more difficult in, in, in our case because obviously, as you mentioned, uh, Zach, having serial entrepreneurs, um, those who have done it before, yeah. failed before. So this is, this is a quite a challenge because uh, we don't have many of those, you know, the so-called real serial entrepreneurs because the, the, um, the economy in the Arab world is based on, you know, uh, uh, in the Gulf it's based on, on, on oil and petrol and in the other, in the other um, countries are based basically on the governments. So basically you don't have those uh, entrepreneurs who have done it before so many times. So we, um, to, to bridge this gap, we went, before launching our uh, initiative, we went and, and signed partnerships with global players um, in Canada, in the U.S., in England, in Spain, Italy, to, to benefit from them. And we are paying a lot of attention to what we call soft landing, which enables us to send our entrepreneurs to these environments so that they can get exposed and they can get really uh, the, the picture, the full picture of how the ecosystem works. I think that is the way we, 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 we dealt with it. Um, and hopefully, uh, by the time... Um, you know, we go through uh, th th this cycle three, four, three, four years down the line. Some of these startups would be able themselves to become mentors and help the ecosystem grow and grow.